Now, as you can see, what we've got from our last video tutorial was a web page, as we've defined right here, with a number of IDs. And as we can see here, we had the universal selector, the body, the wrapper. Inside the wrapper, we had the header, nav on the left-hand side, the main text in here, and finally, our little footer down at the bottom. And if you remember, when we preview this in our browser, this is pretty much what we got. And at this point, what I've done is I've got background colors inside here specifically to show you where the different areas are defined. So this blue area up on top is my header. Here's my nav. Here's my main. Here's my footer. And the gray area that we see here is the background color that we applied to your wrapper. And the wrapper wraps around all of these things. So everything's looking okay up to this point with regards to how the layout is concerned but the text looks eh, you know pretty lousy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna style some text and we're gonna deal with some of the issues that will arise because of that now if you remember one of the things that we had done with this float based design is to define the fixed pixel of the wrapper at 900 we give 200 over here and 700 over here, the rest of what was left over. So we got 2 and 7. So we did this because we didn't want to have any margins to be sort of impeding the success of our website depending on different browsers. So at the very beginning we took the universal selector and we said margin and padding 0. Okay, now because we've done that I'm reluctant to take this box and actually add margin and padding to it. If you remember correctly, when we were discussing the CSS box model, and you can go back and review that particular video if you don't remember it, anytime we add either margin or padding to an element, for example, like this box, that will increase the width of that particular element. So, for example, this box is 200. If I actually add some information to the box with regards to say padding and we'll put some padding to put this text against the edges or away from the edges rather if I did that then that would change the width of this box so instead of being 200 if I had 10 and 10 on either side it would be 220 and that would throw off our entire design now I could go around that and say well okay instead of 200 since I know I'm gonna have 20 pixels I would just make it 180 well, that would work, but you also have to remember that the margin and padding may throw things off depending on which browser you're using. So oftentimes we'll avoid doing that to the actual box itself, but rather the content inside the box instead is what will have the information applied to it, the padding or the margin. Because of that, then all that's really going to happen is your design will stay fixed the way it is. Margin and padding won't be affecting it. But in different browsers, the text might be a little bit closer to the edge or a little bit farther from the edge, depending on which browser you're in. That should not have any adverse effects on your actual design. So that's why what we're going to be doing now is styling the content that's inside of your IDs. So let's jump back to Dreamweaver and we'll start doing that perhaps with the hello world up here at the top. So notice here is the header. Now, like I said, I want to get that object off the edge of the header, but in order to do that, I'm not going to target the header div. What I'm going to do is target the contents inside of that header div. So, for example, I know that this is a H1 inside of header. So let's see how we can apply something to this that will not affect the other H1s inside of main. So check it out. This is the beauty of working with your specific IDs. Select header because I want the new element to appear right underneath it. Keeping all of these things together is useful. So I'm going to say new CSS style, but check this out. Because I put my cursor inside of the H1 up here in header, it allows me to choose a selector. Here it says compound based on your selection. So it would be written something like this. Inside wrapper, you've got an ID called header. Inside header, you've got a H1. It's great, but we don't need to be that specific, so we'll be less specific, and really all we need to target is inside header H1, so all of the H1s in header. Okay, so what I want to do this is go to the category called box, and we're going to apply a little bit of padding on the left-hand side of this object. Now, at this point, if I do this, great, 
moves down over. That's fantastic. But let's also consider something else. Here's a trick how we can put this directly in the center of our particular div. Let me show you what I mean. This div, if you remember, is set to 150 width uh, height, excuse me. So because of that, we can go to the type area here, and I could set the line height for this particular object to be 150. If I do that, notice it gets bang, applied right in the center of that particular object. Now that's a useful trick to remember. Whatever the height of the object is, you could set the line height and it would always put it right in the middle of that particular object. That's something that you might have to use a little bit later on with links and other things like that. So, you know, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'll say, okay, let's uh, put it in Verdana. Let's make it actually rather large. As you can see here, 32 is pretty good, but hey, it's our headline here. So what about 52? Can we make that look pretty interesting? That's really quite big, as you can see there. So maybe 42 would suffice. All right, so if you're happy with that, I can make this all uppercase. I can make it white because we got the white background. Should be fine. Hey, I'll even show you that we can make it italic as well. So there we go. We've got Hello World affected because, not only because of what it says here with our header, ah, but look what I did. By accident, I may have inadvertently created a style, an internal style. And if you remember, that's because when you create a new style sheet, here it says this document only. We need to connect it to style.css, which is what we really wanted to do. Well, let me see if I could take this and actually drag it, and I was able to. Notice, I took what was written inside of my, let's go to split screen, inside of here, my head section, and I just dragged it in here. That means it's now written in style.css. You see here next to source code there's style.css. Look, header and then header space h1, which means any h1 inside of header is going to look like this. So that's exactly what we've done here. Fantastic. So let's go back to source code and notice I still have that extra little bit of code up here. Well look, if we select this style and just trash it, as I've done there, it's instantly removed from the head section, which is great. So now that we've got that done, we're going to come back in the next video, and when we do, we'll style everything that's inside of the main area in a very similar fashion.